All right, guys, this is um, a video in which I'm going to talk a little bit more about energy and, and a new concept called work. And then uh, hopefully at the end of the video, we'll be able to think about what the relationship is between energy and work. So um, let's start off by remembering some stuff that we discussed in class really quickly. Energy, um, uh, if you remember, this is the ability to apply a force. To apply a force and we'll see that forces have to do with work so energy is for our purposes the ability to apply a force and then um, we're going to be specifically thinking about uh, a type of energy called mechanical energy so mechanical energy is energy associated with moving masses um, as we discussed in class, there are lots of other types of energy that we aren't going to discuss. We're only going to spend our time talking about this particular type of energy. So we're going to ignore electrical energy, light energy, heat. We're just going to think about um, the energy associated with masses that are in motion. And um, uh, the uh, unit for energy, to remember, is the joule, abbreviated with J, so you'll... Uh, we'll be using that unit quite a bit. And in some of the, in, in some classes, some of you have already heard this, but some of you haven't. So um, one type of energy, one basic type of mechanical energy, uh, and many of you, even if we didn't get to this in class, this will be familiar to you. There's a type of energy called kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. Um, kinetic energy is a subcategory of mechanical energy and it's a it's maybe the m most obvious example of mechanical energy kinetic energy is the energy this word kinetic actually means associated with motion so kinetic energy is energy that a moving object has energy uh, associated with a moving object so if I throw a baseball that moving baseball has kinetic energy if I drive my car down the road, the, the moving car has kinetic energy. Um, anytime you've got an object that's moving, it has what we call kinetic energy. Um, and this is, a, again, a subcategory of mechanical energy. We're going to have another type of energy later on. Um, there'll be another, there'll be a two here later on. For right now, this is our first uh, subcategory of mechanical energy, kinetic. <clears throat> and um, kinetic energy associated with a moving object if you want to calculate the kinetic energy, so kinetic energy, I'm going to abbreviate it Ke, is equal to, uh, it's related only to two things. It's related to the speed of the object, how fast it's moving, and the mass of the object. So the kinetic energy, we can calculate it pretty simply as one half the mass of the object, m, times its velocity squared. So one half mv squared. This is our equation now for kinetic energy, and this is a very important equation. Um, and uh, I want to think a little bit about this squared term. This is, this is interesting. This, there's some significance to the fact that the velocity here is squared, and I'd like to spend just a minute thinking about what that means. So if I have a moving object and I want to know how much energy it has, how much kinetic energy it has, the only two things that matter are the mass and the speed. Since the speed is squared, this implies some interesting things. Uh, what it means is that if, if you have an object that's going twice as fast, it has four times more kinetic energy. If you have an object that's going three times as fast, it has nine times more kinetic energy. If it's going four times faster, it has 16 times more kinetic energy. So there's some interesting consequences of that. Um, what that means is um, uh, if I'm driving my car and I hit a tree, if I'm going 10 miles an hour, that tree is going to do a certain amount of damage to my car. But if I double my speed, if I hit the, the tree going 10 miles an hour, that tree is going to do four times more damage to my car. Because my car, by doubling my speed, I've increased my amount of energy by four times. If I were to increase from 10 to 30, now I've got nine times more energy, meaning the tree will do nine times more damage to the car. So there's some interesting consequences to this idea that the velocity is squared. Um, some other, thinking about driving, there are some other co common examples. If, if I double my speed 
uh, since I have four times more energy, it's going to take me four times more distance to come to a stop. I need four times more stopping distance. Um, uh, so some interesting consequences of that equation. Now, um, I, I used this word in class, and I've, I used it earlier today, th this word work. So I want to think about what work means in physics. It has a variety of different meanings um, in the real world. But in, in the physics world, it has one very specific meaning. And work is, you, we're going to think of it as using a force to move something. Okay, that's all it is, is using a force to move an object. Um, now, uh, right away, we can kind of see how this would be different from the way we use it in, in everyday life. Imagine um, that I ask you to stand in place holding a heavy textbook. If you were to stand in place holding that heavy textbook, after an hour, you would be very tired, right? Your, your arms would be fatigued from holding up that heavy textbook. But since so you have, in other words, you have used a force to hold that textbook. But technically, you haven't done any work because you haven't moved the textbook. You've just been holding it in place. In other words, don't confuse um, exerting yourself or becoming tired. Don't, don't confuse that with having done work. You can get very tired and do absolutely no work. If you, if you stand holding that textbook in place, you get very tired. But from a physics perspective, you haven't done any work because work implies that you, you've moved something. And so we can define work mathematically. We can say work, which I'm going to abbreviate with a W. I'm going to say that the work here, work equals the force you exert times the distance you move the object. And that's it. Force times distance. Okay. Force times distance. Um, and. Uh, we're gonna. This might not be obvious. It will be obvious maybe later. But um, the unit here for work is also joules. It has the exact same unit as energy. So work and energy are very intricately connected. Um, so work is using a force uh, to move an object. And all you need to know is is the force here in newtons, right? This is measured in newtons, and distance is measured in meters. And in fact, the joule can be rewritten. A joule is equal to a newton times a meter. So a newton meter is called a joule. So um, if you exert a force of one newton to move an object one meter, you have done one joule of work. So that's our, that's our definition of work. Uh, now I mentioned that, that work and energy are connected. And I want to think about the relationship between uh, work and energy. between work and energy. Um, and it's uh, summarized using something that has a fancy name, but I don't think it's that tricky. It's, it's called the work energy theorem. This is a really important topic in this unit and in physics in general, the work energy theorem. This is the work energy theorem. And what the work energy theorem says uh, is that the work that you do on an object, if you do work on an object, the result of that work is a change in the object's kinetic energy. So work, to put it in terms of words, work produces a change in an object's kinetic energy. So in terms of words, that's how we would do, that's how we would explain the work energy theorem. If you do work on an object, you're going to change its kinetic energy. Um, and uh, before I look at that in any more detail, uh, let's write that mathematically. So work produces change in kinetic energy. So work is F times D. So F times D. This is work equals change in 
how do we write that? Delta change in kinetic energy. So change in 1 half mv squared. So this is work, right? Work, uh, let me uh, go ahead and put a box around that since it's an equation. Uh, this thing over here is work, produces change in, and this thing right here is kinetic energy. So work equals change in kinetic energy. Now, another way of writing this is to say FD equals, to write change in, I'm going to say 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared. Okay, So we have to, we have to write it that way now. This is change in kinetic energy. The final kinetic energy, I think that's what this is. This is final kinetic energy, Ke final, minus this thing here is the initial kinetic energy, Ke initial. So this thing right here, this complicated thing, is the change in kinetic energy. And we're going to use this equation right here. This is now our work energy theorem. We're going to use this equation right here a lot. This is a very useful equation in this unit and in physics in general. So you apply, you apply uh, work and it's going to cause some, some sort of a change in kinetic energy. Um, it might be worth pointing out that this, uh, this, it looks like a fancy new equation. This comes directly out of Newton's law. Um, you don't need to know this, but I'm going to explain it to you anyway. I'm gonna, I'll move over here and explain it because um, some of you might be interested. So you might remember Newton's second law says F equals MA. Okay. Well, acceleration, we, you might remember this other uh, equation that we have. This is a, one of our kinematic equations. It says V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A times delta X. Okay, uh, so I can solve for a here. I, I'm going to do a little algebra and say that a equals v final squared minus v initial squared divided by 2 times delta x. And now I can go ahead and put this whole thing in right here. Put it in for a, right? a equals this whole thing. So now I can say f equals m times the final squared minus the initial squared. Actually, I'm going to rewrite that. I'm going to write that slightly differently. Make it a little easier to see. It's m times this whole thing. So I'm going to write m times the final squared minus the initial squared over 2 times delta x. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm, I want to move the delta x over, so I'm going to write, I'm going to multiply both sides by delta x, so I get f times delta x equals this 2, that's 1 half, right, I'm dividing by 2, so I can write 1 half, and then m, 1 half of m times the final squared minus the initial squared. Now, that doesn't look like the work energy theorem. That might not look quite the same as this, but it's exactly the same equation. Delta x means displacement. Another word for displacement is distance. So I can rewrite this f times d. Delta x is the distance, right? So f times d equals 1 half. If I multiply through here, this is 1 half m v final squared minus 1 half m v initial squared. Right? All I did was multiply through by 1 half m. I took this and I distributed it. And I got 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared. So this is now, this is the work energy theorem. Okay, And it follows directly from f equals ma. If you didn't follow that algebra, that's okay. You don't really need to know it. But I, I, I just wanted to point out that it's not like the work energy theorem magically comes up out of nowhere. It comes directly from Newton's laws. Um, one last thing I want to point out before we're done with this discussion in terms of the work energy theorem, uh, and this is important, um, the work that's done can be positive or negative. So work can be positive or negative. Positive or negative. This, this is an important point. 
that work can be positive or negative. And um, to get negative work, the way you get negative work is if the force is opposite from the direction of motion. So positive and negative. So positive work is when the force F and the distance, the force and the distance are in the same direction. In same direction. It's negative if the force and the distance are in opposite directions. Okay, so what do I mean? How, let's try to think about some examples of how you might have force and distance in the same direction or in the opposite direction. Um, same direction, let's, let's think about a car. If, if I'm in my car and I'm moving in some direction, if the force is in the same direction, what does that mean? Well, that means that I'm speeding up, right? I'm hitting the gas. If I hit the gas, the car is pushed forward and it moves forward. All right, so that's that would be positive work, right? Using the uh, accelerating in a car. So I, maybe let's, as an example here, using hitting the gas, hit gas pedal. Um, what about negative work? How, how could force and distance be in the opposite direction? Well, let's say I'm moving forward, but what if I'm in my car and I'm braking? Well, if I'm braking, there's now a backward force. I'm moving forward, but the force is backwards, so there's now what we call negative work. So this would be hit the brake in the car. Hit brake. And th this might give you some clue about the work energy theorem. Any time the work is positive, the kinetic energy will increase. So if I hit the gas pedal, I speed up, my kinetic energy goes up. If I hit the brake, anytime there's negative work, kinetic energy decreases. I hit the brake, I slow down, my kinetic energy goes down. So positive work, positive work means increase in kinetic energy. And negative work means a decrease. And kinetic energy. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that's a fair amount of information. I think that's enough for right now. Uh, we defined kinetic energy. Um, we talked about work using a force to move an object, and then we looked at the relationship between work and kinetic energy in what's called the work energy theorem. We said that doing work on an object produces a change in kinetic energy. If the work is positive, the kinetic energy goes up. If the work is negative, the kinetic energy goes down. That's all for now. We'll practice this next class.